Welcome to Community Conversations. I'm your host, Steve Mantis, and my, my guest today is uh, Moses Shepherd. Welcome, Moses, to our show. Thank you very much, Steve. Moses and I are old friends, and uh, uh, he's uh, had a lot of life experiences. Today, I really want to uh, try to draw on some of his experiences working in Atacokan, Ontario, just west here of Thunder Bay. Um, I've got a real interest in, in how our economies really affect the lives of communities. And, and Atacokan is, a, is one of our examples of a, of a town that, that went through a lot of development, you know, some years ago in the mining, the mine shut down and the community kind of is left to kind of pick up the pieces. And it's, uh, I think it's one of those lessons we get to kind of learn from as we move forward, trying to plan how we can develop our resources here in Northwest Ontario to really benefit our citizens and our communities. So Moses has a lot of experience uh, uh, in that area as well as others, and we'll try to focus mostly on, on Atacokan. So Moses, you were telling me earlier, your first time in Atacokan was what, 1957? 1957, uh, my, my girlfriend at that time, later to become my wife, and I were visiting her sister and her family who lived north of Atacokan in one of the Ontario, Minnesota, uh, what they called Mando logging camps. There was also a school there that the children attended. And uh, we stayed for about a week, as I recall. And so that was, uh, you were telling me you were, you were in the military at the time? I was in the Navy at that time. And uh, subsequently I got out of the Navy in 1960 after five years. And I got a job in the spring of 1961 back in Atacokan with the Ministry of Natural Resources, or the Lands and Forests, as it was known then. And I worked there for the summer of 1961. I got laid off, it was a seasonal position, laid off in the fall of 61. And I went back into the Air Force in the fall. And. Uh, got out in 1966. So there's, uh, so I mean, you're originally from Newfoundland. Yes. Uh, spending, you know, 10 plus years in the service, but there's something that seemed to draw you back to Atacokan. So after your Air Force service, you're back to Atacokan again. Indeed. Uh, well, what was drawing me back was this, this young woman who later became my wife. Uh, she, her home was in Fort Francis. I uh, took a heavy equipment course in 1971 at Quetico Center, again near Atacoka. And in 72, in the spring of 72, got hired to work at Kalen's heavy equipment operator. Okay, so that's, that's your first time working in the mine there in Atacoka in 1972. That's correct, yes. When did that mine first open up? Well, it opened up just prior to World War II the steep rock portion of it. I worked for Kalen, which was the, uh, a subsidiary of Inland Steel of Chicago. They came in the 50s. In fact, uh, in, the, in my first visit to Atacokan, the uh, building and the opening up of the mine and the production was going forward at that time, and a lot of, uh, a lot of workers were, were present in Atacokan. And my brother-in-law and I had gone to the Steep Rock Hotel to have a beer. And I think we were there about two minutes when this god-awful fight started. <laughs> that was my introduction to Atacokan. So that was really boom time, uh, was mining, boom time. mining industry in uh, Northwest Ontario. Indeed it was, yes. So, so you're back at the mine now in 1972. Uh, you're working now uh, full-time uh, heavy equipment operator. That's correct. And you were slowly, uh, I don't know how slowly really, uh, began getting involved in health and safety and, and some of the, the union activities. What was, what was the kind of the impetus that, that led to that first involvement? Uh, the impetus probably for my emphasis on health and safety 
uh, came when I had a brother who was burnt to death in an industrial accident oh in 1964. And, uh, and I resolved at that stage to do whatever I could to make sure that those that didn't happen to anybody else if I could avoid it. So that, that really served to get me involved in, in the health and safety of uh, the committee. I, I was the uh, chair of the health and safety committee at Kaland. I served also on the District 6, which is all of Ontario health and safety committee. We visited uh, mines throughout the province from time to time. So it's oftentimes, it seems like, uh, it, a personal tragedy that happens that gets people really aware of the hazards in the workplace and gets them active, like, like your story in, in occupational health and safety. Uh, yes, that's, it's, it's a motivator. I mean, when you, when you lose a brother who was younger than I was, he was only 24 at the time of his death. He'd been married and they had one, one child and, uh, and she was pregnant with the second child whom we never got to see. And uh, it, it's, it's a terrifying accident, as any accident, uh, industrial or otherwise, can be. Because so often, I think many of us, as workers, are not really that sensitive to the risks that we're facing at work. Uh, we try to ignore them, even once we learn about them. We oftentimes try to ignore them so that we can just go to work, bring home our paycheck, look after the family, and, uh, and not really dwell too much on, on those risks and the hazards that we're facing on a daily basis. And it, sometimes it's that personal experience that gets you, yeah, oh my gosh, we have to look after this. We can't let this slide. Yes. Uh, my brother uh, was burnt to death largely because of the actions of his, of his boss, who happened to be drunk at the time. Um, so, dealing with hot pitch and tar as he was, and and having a drunk supervisor as a deadly combination. Uh, unfortunately, in this case, it it was deadly. Oh my goodness! So uh, you became involved what early on uh, in in your time at the, at the mine? Uh, yeah, I was there probably not more than three months when I became health and safety steward and then subsequently became the chair of the health and safety committee and uh, and also a member of the district six uh, health and safety committee and uh, i was also made uh, seconded by the steel workers to pollution probe as well so that that also became another element in what i was doing Moses, I want to uh, delve into this a little bit further, but we're just going to take a short break. Uh, please stay with us. We'll be right back. Thank you. <laughs> 